Welcome to today's webinar. My name is Kylie Minson. I help on, or I am on the marketing side here at Infla CX. And today we are going to be doing a Genesis admin training on the work teams feature. And we're also going to be talking about the NQ flow. So for the agenda today, we're going to be going over who is Info CX in case we have any um, other people on here that haven't heard of us before. Um, and if you have, it'll be a nice little reminder. Um, and then we'll get into the work teams feature overview and then we'll go into the NQ flow. That'll be a live demo. We'll have some time at the very end for questions and answers um, and then, you know, or contact us. But if you do have any questions throughout the webinar today, please feel free to utilize the chat option or the Q&A section and we can hit those while we're running through things or feel free to save them towards the end. So who is Inflow CX? So Inflow CX is an innovative provider of strategic advisory, deployment and managed services for contact center, customer experience and unified communication solutions. So we help your organization with guidance, execution and optimization of your customer engagement strategy. Our expertise spans um, CX, UC, CCAS, um, WFM, WFO, AI, automation analytics, really in overall um, or overarching um, aspect of the um, CCAS space. We have 75 plus employees that are continuing to grow. We've serviced um, over 1,000 mid-market to enterprise organizations or that we've helped with. We've done over 500 CCAS installs. Um, over 300 contact center consulting engagements. So really just overall, we are experts in this space. At the bottom of the screen, you can see we have our industry accolades and standing um, with a lot of the top players in the industry like 5.9, Genesis, Nice CX1, Zoom, and Ring Central. We also have some really great reviews on G2 and Glassdoor. So those are coming from our customers and employees. If you ever wanna check those out. And then this slide is, or just gives a great overview of the customers that we work with and all of the different industry verticals that we um, do work in. You can really see that we do, we can do it all. Here are some of our um, technology partners. Um, we partner with the industry leading technology innovators to constantly evaluate new, or and are constantly evaluating new technologies to address your ever evolving needs. You can see we have the CCAS, CX, and UCAS ecosystems, anything that you need. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Richard, and he's going to talk to you guys about the work teams overview. Sounds great. Kaylee, if you wouldn't mind, stop sharing. I will take over the, the share here. Just a moment. All right, work teams. This is kind of a newer feature that has been added to Genesis in the last, I would say, a couple months. They've been talking about it for quite a while, and a lot of the functionality hasn't been there, but now it is. So the, so the nice thing about it, it allows for a, a bit more here. So to access the work teams, what they really do uh, is to access the performance in the contract center supervisors. It's really meant for them to be able to help manage uh, and typically evaluate the agency report to those supervisors. It makes it easier for supervisors to organize the agents that they, they manage in the, to teams. So you do have groups, which are different from teams. But this allows you to kind of organize people a little bit easier. So the work teams offer these different administrative benefits. Work team members appear in the people's page. So just kind of like with groups, you can look at uh, what groups somebody is in. You can also look at what teams they are in. You can change the, the work team member appearance in the, the audit trial as well. Work teams also provide workforce and quality management abilities, such as administrators can assign quality management policies to a work team. So you can isolate groups as opposed to having to have a larger quality management policy applied to everyone. Uh, you can now isolate it a little bit more and go, you know, only this team we want to be able to record and things like that. Supervisors can also use the work teams as a filter to monitor adherence and performance. So that makes it a little bit easier to see all the individuals that you manage as opposed to going to a queue because you might not manage everybody on that queue. It might be split up between a few supervisors depending on the size of the queue. 
Supervisors can also filter the work team data and agent performance views, and they can also view, edit the schedules uh, by work teams and schedule activities for work teams. Here are some really important considerations, though, when it comes to work teams. Unlike groups, only work team members can be involved with one work team. So you can't have somebody in multiple work teams. It is a singular item there as opposed to multiple items like with groups where I can be in a ton of different groups. I can only be in one work team. Team members must belong to the same division. So that's another important consideration as well. I have to be a part of the same division that that work team is as well. You can have no more than 200 work teams per org. So there are some upper level limits. So you are limited to just 200 teams per org. Uh, when you create a work team, you can only add users who belong to the divisions which the supervisor has the assigned permission. So if the supervisor is creating this work team, they only have access to the ones that they're able to assign to. So prerequisites to be able to add people to this, you'll need groups, team, assigned permission. And if they're going to be working within the the groups or at least the, the work team there, uh, you'll probably want to do a sign team all that way they have all permissions, but the restrictions apply to the work team members. So there is a limit of 100 users per work team. The work team members can't belong to, uh, can only belong to one work team as we were saying earlier. You can only add users who belong to the same division. So that's another really important consideration. It's really isolated to just the divisions that they're in. Team members must belong to the same division as well. Supervisors do not need to belong to the work teams to manage it. So I, that's a little bit different. Like in the groups, you do need to belong to the, the group in order to manage it. But for the work team, I don't have to belong to that work team to be able to manage it. To add members to it, you just click on admin, you go to directory, you click on work teams, and then type in the name of the individual that you want, and then add it. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to it. It also adds the ability to delete as well. And the same functionality, you go into admin, director, work teams, and then you find the member and you click delete on it. You can also click, there's a checkbox next to them if you need to delete multiple, or you can click the checkbox at the top and it will delete all. So adding members to a queue. So this is where this kind of has a nice functionality extra to it is instead of having to go in and add each individual member, like we did previously, where I'd have to add each user uh, one by one into a queue, I can now add them as a work team into a queue. So I can add a group of people now as opposed to a one by one. So you would go into the members tab of that work team, you would click on the groups tab, and then you would click add groups. And below that you have the three different subcategories, which is added groups only, skill groups only, or work teams. So this allows me to add that work team to the group. Enter the name of the box and then press enter. And that will allow that to add into the whole situation there. So the, the other portion of it, which allows the, the management of the work teams and, and where it actually applies, where I can see things a little bit better in the situation would be uh, the supervisors who are responsible for the performance of their team. The supervisors can use work teams as a filter to monitor the adherence and the filters for work teams and performance views. Supervisors can also view and edit the schedules for specific work teams and schedule activities by team. So this allows a lot of um, extra abilities here. This allows me to go into each one of these and these sections here and filter by those work teams. That way I'm not trying to look by an individual because it's usually isolated to an individual or to a queue. This allows me to look at my team as a whole and see how they're doing against each other. All right, we're going to dive into adding a, a flow here in a second. I'm just going to get the stroke over here. Looks like somebody else is doing some testing at the same time. I'm using this as well. This brought over here. You might see an alert for a call a few times in here. I apologize about that. So you have in queue flows and you have the inbound call flow and how they work together is a little bit different. So we're going to go into architect here.
So typically an inbound call flow is where that initial call is gonna happen. From there, then it can transfer to an NQ to kind of isolate down. Uh, let's say I have a single number that I want the company to, to be known for. I have a auto attendant, kind of situation in there or a menu where somebody's going to choose one, two, three, or four. And each one of those cues might have different information that I want to pass along. The benefit to having an NQ flow allows you to really isolate what you want each one of those cues to have. So to go into those, you go to the drop down here and we'll go into the NQ call. And we'll create a new one. I'm just going to name it webinar to make it really easy. And this is going to open it up into uh, a hold music because this is typically where somebody's going to drop in. They're going to automatically be put on hold. They're going to want kind of a hold music. This is where you would add additional things such as a loop of how long you want to play a message. This is also where you would add a callback for this particular queue. You could do it in the NQ or in the inbound flow. However, it's more advised and a little bit easier to manage when it is in the NQ tasking portion of this as opposed to the other side. Uh, there is a I wouldn't say a negative, it's just something that they haven't added yet. Uh, the difference that I find between the inbound flow versus the NQ flow is being able to add what's called a flow outcome. Flow outcomes are very useful when it comes to trying to track down and troubleshoot something. If we're adding a prompt and, and for some reason something's not playing right, I can add NQ or sorry, the on the inbound flow, I can add a flow outcome to say whether or not it reached this point. Unfortunately, once you get into the, the queue portion, you don't have that option. So that, that's kind of where the, the positive and negatives uh, between the two are, but they're gonna function basically the same. So if I wanted to add hold prompt and then give them a voicemail, I can do that. I can just give them the option for voicemail here going in the drag and give different options. These are very similar options to what's the uh, inbound flow has. There are some limits to it. Like I said, with the option to be able to have the, the flow outcome, you don't have a flow outcome variable that's available in here. So the hold music, and then I can do a loop. So I want it to loop with the hold prop. I'm gonna have it, mm, Let's do three loops here. So it's gonna go around three times before we get that option. Let's name it a loop of three. That way I know how many times it's been looping. I'm gonna give an option in here to transfer to voicemail. And I'm gonna put a decision above that kind of like we did before. Let me jump back over to the other one. That way I can show you the different flow here. And as you can see, this is our test environment. So we have a lot of different things that we're testing all the time for the different options here. So kind of like in this situation where we have it doing a schedule check, I can also have it do a schedule check over there um, and then allow it to give the option to transfer to those different queues. So from that queue, within that queue, that's where I'll add the ability to allow them to go into that end queue flow and have those different options where I'll give a call back or if I wanna give a, um, just a voicemail option in that situation. That's where you'd place that at. That way I don't have to add more and more to the situation on the NQ flow or not the NQ flow on the inbound call flow. Let's jump back over to the NQ flow.
and jump over the other one really quick. This one's built out a little bit more. Hopefully you're able to see this. So the start task, I'm going to have three loops. I'm going to give it a whole prompt for a one minute duration and apply a thank you for your patience. So this gives the ability for about three minutes of time that they're going to sit in queue before they're given more options. After that option, they're going to get collect data input, which is going to get the information from whether or not they want to press one or not for a callback. So if I no longer want to wait on the line, I can press one in this queue and then provide a callback number. And that callback number upon success will then give that option an end of flow. If I don't want to do that, it'll continue down the no line here. And then after a certain amount of time, It'll go, thank you, try again later. Uh, so if we only want somebody to be able to sit on hold for about three minutes before offering them a call back, we can do that. Uh, we can add more loops and add more times. So we offer multiple callbacks by adding a loop to the situation. Uh, that way we give them more time to make that decision, even though that's really what we want to do. We kind of shuffle them that direction and go, hey, we really would prefer you to give us a call, uh, have us give us uh, the ability to call you back when available. Um, but we can also add that availability for voicemail. Uh, that way, if it does fail, I can always get that voicemail option as well. Is there any questions about the NQ flow or the work teams that we have right now? Not seeing any uh, any questions come up at this time. So if you do have questions that we weren't able to answer in this situation, or you're just more comfortable asking the question, or if you think of one later on, you can always get in touch. You can give us a call at 844-446-3569. And that's gonna bring you over to our support line, press one or two, either way, it doesn't matter. You're gonna reach one of our techs and we should be able to answer any of those questions for you, or at least get you pointed in the right direction. Otherwise, you can also email us and that's gonna be probably your, your easiest bet to, to get information is do the contact at inflowcx.com and somebody will be able to reach out to you as soon as they're able.